No, this is nothing to do with the, the current situation and something that we've been working towards uh, over the course of many years, integrations with SharePoint, OneDrive, Outlook Calendar. Um, you know, the reality is uh, we have an a incredibly strong business in enterprise and almost all of our enterprise customers are also Office 365 customers. So the fact that they choose to use Slack um, doesn't mean that they're not also using a bunch of Microsoft tools. What have you observed about people working from home and, and, and using Slack? Are they adding to more services? What, what sort of other needs do they have? And, and what sort of trends are emerging as, as we all sort of try to adapt to this new life? Yeah, um, it, it's been really interesting. So you think about the kind of uh, what people hope to accomplish out of having a meeting. And it's often to get a decision made, it's to update people on the status of projects. Um, there's a whole bunch of reasons to have a meeting. And um, there's an immediate obvious uh, switch that goes off in people's heads. Hey, we used to sit in the same room, now we're at home, we need to have a video conference. But the best way to support that work, you know, getting the decision made, getting people on the same page, knowing where you can ask the question, is often better served by other means. And in the case of Slack, it's channels. So we, in the first, um, 60-ish um, percent of this quarter added 9,000 new paid customers. That's a net number compared to 5,000 for the previous quarter and 5,000 for the quarter before that. Um, and that's a that's an enormous surge. We've also seen uh, the number of messages sent per user up 25%. And I think suddenly people are discovering a lot of techniques um, that you know, were available to them before, but that suddenly become mandatory because when the only tools you have to get work done are meetings and email um, and meetings suddenly become a lot harder to, to pull off, you begin to look for alternatives. Stuart, in terms of, uh, in terms of what everyone is using the, the product for, uh, is there a future now that you see outside of the workplace that it's not just uh, internal corporate usage and, and it can be used by consumers as well? Yeah, so I, I think that uh, we've seen all kinds of interesting stuff happen with Zoom, um, you know, people having happy hours and kids' birthday parties. And I think probably less of that because Slack is really specifically designed um, for groups of people who are aligned around the accomplishment of some goal or, or set of goals. That doesn't have to be business. I and mean, we have, um, you know, incredible uh, share in the academic world, most of the top research labs. So it's, you know, it's very energizing for our employees today to be in a position to support researchers who are working on uh, vaccines and other mitigation strategies. Um, but we see non-professional usage in things like a home renovation project or organizing a wedding or a kid's soccer league. It's really about getting stuff done together, um, creating transparency, creating alignment, making it uh, quicker. Email. So, uh, yes. Stuart, and so just to be really clear, uh, you know, so Wilford mentioned earnings about two weeks ago. Your stock did take a, what, 20% or more slide on the conservative guidance. So are you saying that the situation has changed completely and, and people should sort of throw that out the window and rethink how they think about what Slack's business is going to look like this year? I, I think anyone who believes they have the answer for that kind of question is fooling themselves. You know, we, we look at... Um, what might happen on the small business side? There could be, you know, millions of bankruptcies, and that will obviously affect us. We have a very healthy um, small business uh, uh, part of Slack. Um, enterprises can shut down spending. On the other hand, um, we've seen the surge in new signups, so obviously people are seeing the need, and we also see expansion in existing enterprise customers. It's very hard to know how that, you know, those two forces balance each other out. But there's other things to consider too. You know, talking to other software CEOs. What do you do when you're not doing field marketing events to drive new customers? What do you do when your salespeople can't travel? What do you do when your executive briefing centers are shut? And how is that going to uh, manifest in, in pipeline and growth, you know, three, six, nine, 12 months? So right now, I think it looks great for us. It's mm -hmm. impossible to say how this shakes out over the year.